Welcome to Hope Restored, showcasing God's miracles in the lives of people who share their stories with us, with the hope that you too will experience God's miraculous touch in your life through the love of Jesus. Welcome to this episode of Hope Restored. I am your host, Renee Kay. It is my great pleasure to bring uh, Pastor Jeff Culver. Jeff started out his um, uh, young life um, seeking after God, but um, didn't have a super close personal relationship with him until Mm -hmm. an accident happened. Um, Jeff fell off of a roof and um, became severely disabled and in a great deal of pain. And he sought after... um, sought after God and asked for healing. And it was really interesting how God brought about the healing, but not only brought about the healing, but also anointed him and gave him a great purpose. Um, So we just want to invite Mm -hmm. Jeff to share his story. One of the things about Jeff's story that I also want to bring up in advance is that Jeff has seen Jesus multiple times, and he will describe to you in great detail what Jesus looks like, what it was like to be in his presence. So Jeff, I just want you to go ahead and start with um, with your accident. All right. Okay. Well, I was um, young. My wife and I had only been saved a few years. We just had a six-month-old baby, and... Um, I was working in construction at the time and the contractor that I worked for had lifted too much, hurt his back and had to take a month off. So I needed to find some other jobs. And one of the jobs that I, I found was just uh, screwing down a pole barn roof and it was in November and it had frosted the night before. So the roof was icy. And uh, one of the rules is you always want to tie all your own knots. And I want to affirm that there was one knot that I did not tie. And that is the knot that failed on me uh, six inches from the ridge of the roof. I fell on concrete dry pack and I don't remember the accident. But what I do remember is watching that rope unravel, not being able to grab it. Worst feeling in, in the world. But secondly, um, so I let out a quick prayer. Oh, God, God filled in the rest for me. And then I thought to myself, and it's funny how <laughs> the decisions you'll make at these moments, but I was like, break your legs, not your neck. And I did everything I could. Don't remember it. Um, I did not break my legs, but um, I did um, end up disabled for 18 months. Um, severe pain. Uh, it was very very painful experience. It was continual pain. Um, Could hardly walk. I mean, across the room, things like we take for granted. I was, it was everything I could do to take 12 steps. I mean, I was in a lot of pain. I couldn't hold anything. I couldn't do any activities. And just the trauma from going from being young and strong and, you know, and working in the construction trade, you're very strong. And to, you know, I can't hold my newborn child and can't move my head to the right. Uh, I had um, seven hairline fractures in my spine. I had um, I had damaged my nerves coming right at the base of my spine so severely that doctors said I would never heal. They were traumatized and I just, you know, felt kind of the moment of impact constantly. It was, I was just, in, it was a lot of pain. So anyway, during that time, um, as I realized this doctor said, Jeff, you're going to have to learn to live with this. You're going to have to live with this the rest of your life. And that's the way it is. And I was going to a, a independent church that was kind of charismatic. And after a few months, the pastor was very honest with me. And um, he said, don't come forward for prayer. I just don't have faith for your healing. And he was very honest and he was just an awesome guy. But in this moment, he, he felt so bad for me. And, you know, so here I was where, you know, I'm about three year old Christians at this time and trying to go through all of this and um, the humiliation of everything, and the, the endless pain and just all of the emotional and psychological things. I mean, you know, it was more than enough on my plate. And I, I sought the Lord because I didn't want to go back to my former life. So I just sought the Lord and I just began to dig and immerse myself in worship music and the word. I'm a musician. So um the worship just became deeper and deeper and um 
as I prayed, I, I really came to realize that healing is for today. And this was a new discovery for me. And I began to seek the Lord. And, you know, there's a story in Luke where they call it the important friend, where the short version is that the man has friends come over. There's no bread. So he goes over to his neighbor's house who's asleep and makes a really good deal with him. I'll quit knocking when you give me bread. And that would became my prayer. <laughs> is God, I'll stop asking when I get healed. And I just went at it and I, and it didn't happen instantly. It was over a, a long period of time. Finally, I was doing everything also I could to try to recover and trying to get some kind of life, some kind of motion. And I'd gotten to the point where I could drive for about five minutes. And I lived on a small island. So uh, thankfully there wasn't long to drive and I would try to do just something to be alive. And so I had a couple errands that I could do. And then I would spend the rest of the day. I couldn't do anything, but at least I did something and it meant the world to me. So I went out and I wasn't a fan of Christian radio, never really have been, to be honest. Um, but I felt so impressed that I was supposed to listen to Christian radio that day. So I turned on a local Christian radio station and, and the sermon started. It was based on Elijah getting um, called to the brook during, during the drought and during the famine and where God supernaturally provided for him from the brook and the ravens brought food. And then um, the brook dried up and the sermon was, stopped because I had to get out of the car. And I, so I hobbled to deliver this note to someone that I needed to, and I hobbled back in the car, sat there and recovered. Okay, I can do this on to the next little stop. Turn the car on and the sermon picks up right where it left off. <laughs> it's the craziest thing. And this preacher continued is that he could have um, got mad at God at that point. God, you called me here. The river dried up. What are you doing to me? Well, then I had to turn the car off again. I did my other little errand and came back with the same routine, recover. Okay, now I'm headed home. Turn the car on and the sermon continues. Um, and then... Between, on the way home, just a few miles, the sermon ends. And the point of the sermon was God calls you for a season and then he can call you somewhere else to take you into your promise. And then I heard the Lord speak to me. And it was one of the first times I really heard God speak to me in my life. And he said, you are to go to the Assembly of God Church in Friday Harbor and if, next Sunday. And if you do not, you will miss your miracle. Now that meant, now that meant a guy that can't walk a quarter mile is going to have to walk a quarter mile. I mean, a guy that, um, you know, can't climb a flight of stairs is going to have to climb a flight of stairs on a ferry. Uh, this wasn't easy, but I had heard the sermon. I, I knew something supernatural had happened. And, it, and so I did. And it was the worst service I've ever been in in my Christian life. You would, <laughs> because, well, I mean, you know, the black hole was just coming in and out. It's just trying, fighting to remain conscious. It was so bad. And nothing to do with the surface, just everything to do with the pain. <laughs> and um, my wife goes around back and she comes in this, well, there's this flyer that next Sunday is uh, this missionary um, evangelist gal from Alaska that is coming and she has seen God heal back. I'm interested. <laughs> so, uh, wow. So we decided, okay, well come over next Sunday and we tried to attend the meetings during the week. And one of the things that she had said was that she didn't want to pray for the hard cases until Friday. Uh, I'm, I was a little bit disappointed, but she said the reason why is you need to soak yourself in the word. You need to soak yourself in faith building teaching. And um, she was very, very accurate. I mean, the, I tried to get a little early prayer. I was like, no, you need to soak sit you need to soak you need to immerse yourself and and so i did and then i i um friday came and they prayed for me now the pentecostal charismatic things were outside my world i was not familiar with them at the time and so it was first time i was ever slain in the spirit I, and god just came over me and i just couldn't stand i mean that's that's what happened and they were 
careful with me and laid me gently on the floor. And then the, um, what's so funny is everything went out. I just kept, I just got stuck. I couldn't move. And I came to, and there was a note right set up by my face and the lights were out. The doors were locked. I mean, I was left alone in this church strange church and my wife had gone to the music store and I was coming back and then they went and prayed for me that evening and when I walked in here's here's fascinating this is so awesome I am wow (laughs) anyway um so we come in and I'm hobbling still and I'm little tiny church maybe seat 50 people I see about 10 12 people up in the front inner circle holding hands and praying and in the middle of it I see a flame it goes all the way up to the ceiling. And I'm like, oh, my, I know that's God. And I got to get there. And my wife's kind of panicking. we got two little babies. And she's, and I'm staggering, you know. And then all of a sudden, the flame just pulses. And it's, I just saw a wave go out. It hits me right in the chest. Boom. And I'm staggering. And I'm trying to get forward. Because I'm seeing this. And to me, you'd think everybody saw it. And it pulses again. Wham. Right on my face. Um, I don't remember the service. I don't remember the night. I wake up the next morning in a stranger's house because we're on a different island from where I live. My wife and I, my two babies. And the pain is gone. Instead, you know, when you have a terribly deep cut, um, and there's a difference between the cutting pain and the healing pain. But there's a difference. It was that healing pain, that deep healing pain. And then I noticed this, I could move my head to the right. And I hadn't done that for a year and a half. It was completely unable. I could hardly even hold my head up. And all of a sudden I could, and I could stand up straight. I haven't stand, stood up straight in a year and a half. And oh my goodness. Now, what's really fun is we had to get on the next ferry because my family, my mom and my dad were coming up to visit us. And my grandmother, who at that time uh, was completely disinterested in any form of religious expression of any flavor. And I was coming home. And so we got home just in time for them to to beat them. And we had wood heat. And Catherine's been doing all the chopping. My wife has been doing all the wood chopping for a year and a half. And so she just goes, as usual, to go start chopping wood. I'm like, no, I can chop wood. I've never been so excited to chop wood in my life, I'm telling you. And um, so I grabbed that big maul that we had and started to split some wood. And all of a sudden, over my left, it, it came over my left. And I just felt all of the pain and all of the injury try to come back on me physically. I remember turning my head to the left. And, and I said, oh, no, you don't. I'm not going back to that in Jesus' name. And I learned a few things. I learned that I got to fight to maintain my healing, just like I got to seek and after to get my healing. So that's the story, the short version of my healing. (laughs) Wow, that's an incredible, incredible story, (laughs) Jeff. I just love it. And I love how um, one of the things that I appreciated about the lady that you said was the minister that had come is mm-hmm. that she really wanted you to soak in his word and soak in his presence and build your mm-hmm. faith to be able to receive the miracle. Oh, absolutely. Healing. Absolutely. That was that was so wise, you know, particularly in our prevailing Pentecostal charismatic culture where we just seem to have this idea that we need to somehow uh, prove that we have an anointing so we just go with whatever and and i think that um had she gone that way i would have missed the fullness and i think that we miss a lot of the fullness of what god wants to do because we're so busy trying to have anything happen and boy waiting and soaking uh, I really believe that's why I received the fullness of the healing that I did. I'm, I'm absolutely convinced of that. A lot of wisdom in slowing down and letting God do the whole process rather than just then rushing through and having something happen. I agree. I agree. And I think that um, part of the reason why also she did that was because, um, she, you know, she was probably listening to the Lord saying, slow it down, mm-hmm. right? 
slow it mm -hmm. down. But also God had a purpose, a greater purpose for you in the long Absolutely. run. And he was, oh. and he was wanting you to marinate and, um, so just slow it down, like you said, but marinate in his presence. Mm -hmm. And I want you to talk a little bit because there's a lot of people watching that, that may or may not know what slain in the spirit is. <laughs> And yes. I know that when you when you first said that you went there and you saw the the flame and then it just hit you and you were out and you were on the floor and and uh, woke up and people were gone. You know that's <laughs> kind of an odd thing to happen, right? But yep. if you understand what is happening, and they obviously understood what's happening, they were like, "We're not waking him up. We're just going to let him be there because God mm -hmm. is doing something um, miraculous." And so can you just oh, yeah. talk a little bit about what that what that experience was? Oh, it was it was very different. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you that um, never happened since um, in the in the drama, dramatic sort of way that it happened to me. Um, definitely not something I really want to recreate either. But, um, you know, when when I was, it was more just being overwhelmed by the presence of God to the point that I couldn't support myself. And I think that's. Um, at the foundational level, what, what really being slain in the spirit is, uh, it's not a cheap thing. It's, it's something that I think we need to have a more sacred view of and a lot more respect for rather than just kind of a quick fall down, get up type of thing. What, what was happening to me was I was overwhelmed by the presence of God. And, and we find that occurring in the Bible. We find many references where I fell as dead. Well, that's, that's very similar to what happened to me. Um, you know, there was nothing there. I mean, I had no resistance um, because of the shape that I was in. The last thing on the face of the earth I wanted to do was fall down. I mean, getting up was hard enough. And falling down was just compounded the problem. So, so really, that's what I would say in a nutshell. Um, being slain in the spirit is, is being overwhelmed by the presence of God. Wow. Okay. Thank you for that beautiful explanation. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that see that on TV or, you know, see it in churches mm -hmm. or hear about it or heard about it. And, you know, I know that um, they question, is it real? Is it valid? You know, and I think sometimes it, um, you know, people will use that as a showy thing. Um, Way but too I think much. When, but right. But when it's real and it's genuine and Holy Spirit comes on you so strong, like you said, you know, it's not something you sought out for. It just <laughs> happened and it just made you, you just collapsed under the weight of the Holy Spirit, right? And that to me is a miraculous thing and it's beautiful. Oh, um, absolutely. Right? And I didn't even really believe in the slaying of the Spirit until there I was. <laughs> yeah, right. So. Okay, so from here... Share the rest of your story and tell us when you saw Jesus. Well, I, I've I've been privileged to see the Lord a few times. Um, first time was actually during the time that I was injured, and I was just soaking myself in the Word and um, reading the Bible and worshiping and praying a lot and learning to do these 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 things. Um, not really knowing that I was going to end up in the ministry at that time, even. But. Um, I was learning to immerse myself in, in the Lord, and I had a I had a dream. It was a dream, and in the dream, um, I was caught up into the heavens, and I, I there's this blazing ball of fire just to my left, and I knew it was Jesus. And it's crazy how you know that you know that you know, but uh, you know. And I was looking down and. I was looking at the outline of a church building. It was supposed to be a very nice building, but the bricks were, you know how like little kids would be outlining with, with bricks or rocks, maybe a building that they're going to imagine. None of the stones touch and none of them are straight. And, but you can get the general idea of what it, they're imagining it is. Well, that's how they looked. And I remember looking to the Lord. I looked to the left and I said, they need a master builder. And immediately, I was in the pulpit of that church that I was looking at, and I was preaching. And all of the people in front of me, they were stained. They had mud stains and filth all over them. And this was a very unique 
building that I was in, it had a long ramp running to the left. And there was a door at the end of the ramp. And I remember turning to the, to look to the ramp down the ramp and Jesus walks in the door and he wa starts walking up the ramp. And I just point, that's what I did. And the people all looked. And as they looked immediately, they were cleansed. Oh, it was powerful. And I was watching this and I'm, I'm marveling. I'm in awe, but I just got my hand here. All of a sudden Jesus is right here. Then boom, I'm outside the building. And I'm, I'm working on, on some concrete, and then there's some impurities in the concrete. And when you're pouring concrete, you got to make sure there's no impurities in it. Otherwise, that'll rot and create a weak spot in the concrete. So I dealt with that. Immediately, I was following Jesus down a street. And on two sides, there were all these dirty people, just like what I saw in the sanctuary earlier. And they were yelling to Jesus, crucify him, crucify him. And suddenly, I was walking down that road by myself in the same situation. I turned into, to my left again, into a building, and then this massive wave came over me, and I woke up. And that was the first time I, I saw the Lord, and I realized, um, have come to realize over the, uh, the years of ministry that, well, that was very prophetic of the ministry God was giving me, which was um, restoring and foundational, uh, restoring churches that had gotten off of God's building plan and, and restored them. And that's what I've spent my career doing. So, yeah, that was the first time. <laughs> and do you remember what Jesus looked like? Um, you know, in every time that I've seen Jesus, it's the same. It's very, very similar to the Akiana painting. Um, it's really just striking um, for me. His hair is like maybe an inch longer. And, you know, there's there's slight variations. Um, but but yeah, if you, if you were to say, what did he look like? Uh, the closest representation I've ever seen is that Akiana painting. Oh, my goodness. I know she really saw the Lord. Okay. So take us to the next chapter. Well, <laughs> so, <clears throat> well, um, we were, we ended up um, going to the ministry and I had, um, I was on my second church. I was in pastoring in Dillingham, Alaska. We pastored in the bush of Alaska for six and a half years. What a privilege. And um, so we were there and we were starting to pray. I knew that I'd done what the Lord had asked me to do. And so I was praying and I went to sleep like that ordinary night, right? You go to bed and suddenly I am floating through this hallway and the hallways, I can't even see the top of them. Um, and there's just so many things that I don't have words to describe what I'm seeing. But everything radiated light. There was so much light everywhere. Um, if I had to use these natural eyes, they'd melt. I mean, there was just that much light. It was, and so I'm going through and I see people. I don't recognize them, but light out of their innermost being comes out and it's coming in colors that don't even exist on earth. And I know what they're thinking. And they're looking at me and they're saying, why is he here? He's not supposed to be here yet. And they're having a conversation with each other that I, I'm not supposed to be there yet. And they're rather, but I keep going in, in the distance, there's this cloud, a massive cloud, and it's sparkling and golden and radiating. And I know what it is. It's one of the neat things about being with God is that, you know, and I know it's the Shekinah glory. And on the back side of that Shekinah glory, I can see the image of a man. And you know how it's deeply foggy. And you can make out that someone's over there. You don't know who it is, whether they're male or female. You don't know much. You just know someone's there. Well, that's how it looked. And but I knew it was Jesus. And furthermore, I knew that I was going wherever I was going. I was going to meet him. And so I was very excited about that. As a matter of fact, I was more excited about that than all of the other things I was seeing. And so I just continued my trip. And I ended up on this perfect grass, uh, perfect lawn. I mean, every blade of grass was perfect. And when I stopped, I stopped. And I remember laying there in perfect peace. 
And the first first time I thought something came in, the thought was this. So that was dying. What was I so afraid of? It was my thought. Then I laid there. I was in perfect peace, just waiting for Jesus. Suddenly he's there. And you know how you reach down with two hands to pick up your friend who's fallen and pick him up? That's what he did to me. And huge smile and perfect love and perfect acceptance. And he stands me up and he's radiating this joy and looking right through you. You know, you can see from beginning to end and there's all this stuff going on at once. And I'm standing there and I'm going, I know I've sinned but I can't remember what I did. <laughs> and it just stunned me. And I'm looking at this perfect love and acceptance and joy and it's overwhelming. And he just looks at me and he says, I have need of you Detroit legs. And bam, I'm in my body. And I'm just, uh, <gasps> my wife's, uh, was, she said she was like pushing on me or something. And I was terrified. Absolutely. At the same time, I was overwhelmed and I was terrified. And um, I knew what God meant. So I um, <laughs> normally when you're going to apply for a church as a minister, you're going to try to put your best foot forward. Me, I was terrified. I just wanted to get something in the mail. I woke up. Um, I only had a photo. I wasn't even prepared for a job search. I I had a photocopy of an email so uh, of a resume. So I, I grabbed that. I just ran over to the church. I grabbed, you know, it's back in the days of cassette tapes still. And I just grabbed two random cassette, cassette tapes. To this day, I have no idea what sermons I sent them. <laughs> and um, I just got it in a ma mail mailing envelope and was out there sitting in the post office parking lot waiting for them to open. I was afraid of disobeying God. I've never felt the fear of the Lord like that before. Um, it was a new experience and it was terrifying, but safe at the same time. Very, very hard to explain, but that's what it was. Terrifying yet safe because I was obeying. <laughs> And so I, I did. And you say we spent the next 11 years in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. And that's how. Um, so that was quite an experience there. OK, yeah. so from there, what happened? Well, from there, we um, ended up. Uh, God opened the door for us to go to the U.S. Virgin Islands and we ended up in St. Croix. Um, and because I have a building background, I thought God was just introducing me to this fourth season he made called summer and uh, you know when when you've spent your adult life in alaska and northern minnesota summer is a strange word and so we discovered summer and we got we made up for all of the summers we missed but uh, i and they had a big building project and i've got a construction background so you know it was a good fit and i thought wow this is really awesome god's just blessing us well um then there was hurricane maria which it had a direct hit on St. Croix. It's 175 sustained. And it was a really bad hurricane. And we were in the Northwest quadrant in the meat grinder directly. It was um, when the governor spoke on the radio, he said that the airport was three miles away from our home. And um, the windometer there had broke off at 178. So, I mean, those winds were really going. The walls of the house were moving, the roofs breathing up and down. And you're just like, Lord, we are in your hands. There's nowhere to go. And he covered us. But um, so we had to rebuild. And we lost the new building that we were building. We lost uh, 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 the, the fellowship hall. And we also lost the sanctuary. <laughs> and so we had, uh, we had to start from ground zero. We rebuilt. Um, and then I was praying. And this is one of the things that I learned while I was injured was to pray a lot and, and to listen a lot. And um, so I was praying and I heard the Lord very clearly say to me, would you consider Sherber? Now, I knew that was back in Minnesota. And my immediate response is, well, Lord, that's Minnesota. Summer. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. <laughs> and and um, so I went home and told my wife, Catherine, and she's like, oh, Minnesota, 
don't want to go back either. <laughs> and um, so then I get a, a text from the superintendent of Minnesota, Mark Dean, and he texts me and says, Jeff, give me a call when you can. Okay, I'll call Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi. Would you consider Sherburn? Well, I can put one and one together. <laughs> We're going back to Minnesota. So we did. I'm glad we did. And that takes me to where I am today. We had some work to do there, some special work. The church was in, um, had gone through a really rough run and just kind of needed some help getting back on their feet. And so God's, God's done a wonderful thing here. He's done a great work with them, which takes me to today. Yes. Which, today, was which a big, is, today was a big day. Yes, it was. And that actually started, um, you know, the end of September where I was praying again in the sanctuary as praying and just asking God, well, I've achieved all the benchmarks that superintendent asked me to do. I knew this was a short term assignment. What do you want to do with us? And then I gave him some of my wonderful suggestions and such. <laughs> and um, anyway, um, he appeared to me in the sanctuary again, is, every time he looks the same, but um, he came and just put his arm around me. And just like you're asking a favor of a friend, he said, would you do one more? I just waterworks, you know, and um, just, of course, this end of, end of the sub, say no more. Um, it's rather generic because one more could be anywhere. <laughs> I didn't receive that at the time, but that was that. And came home and told my wife what had happened. And boy, <laughs> again, okay, Lord, that's what you want. That's what you get. And so we began to pray. Where do you, where do you want us to go? And then God gave me a very specific prophetic dream about a series of events. He gave them all in pictures. I won't go into all the details of it, but um, suffice to say that every Every piece of that dream came to pass. And so, well, this morning I, I announced to our congregation that at the end of May, we will be leaving um, Minnesota again. We'll be moving to Brownsburg, Indiana to lead Lighthouse Christian Fellowship in Brownsburg, Indiana. It's on the west side of Indianapolis. Um, I believe God's going to do some good things there. Yes, he is. And they're going to be very, very uh, blessed to have you be there. And well, you're, thank you. Um, you know, God is... God allowed you to go through some pretty traumatic experiences in your life when you mm -hmm. were younger um, to get you to completely trust him, right? And to completely rely 100% on him. Well, to teach and me to, yes. To teach you to, right? Kind of mm -hmm. squeezed you, forced you <laughs> in, into doing that, right? And that's right. what happens when we go through uh, traumatic experiences and um, you know, it's like that the tree um, gets stronger as it's sh shaken Bruce. and has to get deeper. The roots have to get deeper. And so when you go through uh, struggles and trials and hardships like that, you know, um, mm -hmm. was it the Bible says that long suffering is a blessing. True. Right. And Not my favorite look, word, but it is a blessing. <laughs> that's right. We don't look at it as being a blessing. But mm -hmm. long suffering is definitely something that God uses to um, establish himself in us stronger Amen. and to grow our faith and to trust him with everything that we have. And so um, they're going to, this little church in Indiana is definitely going to be blessed to have you and your wife joining oh, them. <laughs> so we just, uh, we will just keep you covered in prayer and Amen. Your journey in your new in your new home, and um, we just want to thank you for joining us and sharing your uh, story with us. And before we go, Jeff, I would be so honored, and our community would be so honored if you would just pray for them. Right, I'd be glad to. Oh, Let's so. pray. Well, Father, I, I just thank you. You've shown yourself to be so faithful so many times throughout our lives. And I know that there's people that are hurting. I know that there's people that feel like I'm never going to get out of this bad set of circumstances that I'm in right now. But Lord, you've shown me that you're a healer, you're a deliverer, you're a restorer, 
and that you take us to places that are so much better than we could ever imagine. And you've got good things in store for each one. So I pray, Lord, that you would open the eyes of every person's heart who has watched this broadcast, that you would lose the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of you, that you would reveal to each one the hope of your calling for them, that they've got a hope and a future that is so bigger and so much better than they could ever imagine. I ask that each one would experience your revelation and your insight for their lives. And that for those that don't know you, they would just take that simple faith step of believing in you and watching what you can do because you can put them back together again and you can put them back together better than they ever were before. And I ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor well, Culver. You. I really appreciate you joining us today. And um, we will put uh, his contact information in the description below. So if you would Sounds like to good. get a hold of him, and um, we will have that information in there for you. So again, thank you for joining us. And I hope that this um, that this message inspires you, encourages you, strengthens your faith, and know that God loves you more than you can even imagine. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. God bless well, you. Well, thank you so much. God bless you.